Hello commanders in part 3 of the German Empire series. You can see here that we made it to the first uh, position with 19 cities and 230 victory points. Will we be able to stay leading the leaderboard? Will we be staying the first ones? But here, look at this. This is the European coalition and actually I was surprised that France actually was allied with Poland. We literally destroyed Poland and we had a peace pact with France and later on I found out that Poland and France were in the same coalition with Belarus, Romania and they are forming a very very tough European coalition here and you can see it's already day 13 and France is going for the level 4 army bases and the level 4 naval bases. In the last part we saw that Romania is making level 3 army bases, also Austria is making them. So directly I rushed to, uh, to the research of the attack helicopters and now I'm starting to spam the Mangusta attack helicopters and level them up to level 2. In today's video it's going to be very very important video and we are going to talk about the art of anticipation. This is something I never spoke about actually. I never did a video about the art of anticipation. How you look closely to your neighbors, how you anticipate your next enemy, how you keep monitoring his cities and what kind of buildings he is making to make the perfect the perfect build up and strategy to take him down. In this video, in today's episode, we are going to focus on this aspect of the game because it's very, very important to know how to anticipate and wait a little bit before attacking, how to choose your next enemy and how to build a perfect strategy to take down your enemy. Keep watching till the end because a lot of secrets they are going to be revealed in episode 3 of the German Empire series. Directly we are going to level 3 attack helicopters. Now attack helicopters they are my 100% priority. Belarus is attacking Russia. Now Belarus has opened a Russian campaign there. And here is Romania opening uh, a Greek campaign also. So here our neighbors, they are moving from all the sides, they are all active. You can see here that Romania has two level 3 army bases. Maybe he is making special forces because he has the level 1 air base and also he might be having the SAM launches. I'm fortifying my defenses uh, with uh, the borders of France. Also, I still have some units here in the lands of Ukraine. I'm going to prepare some stacks on the borders with Romania. At the same time, I'm going to prepare some stacks on the borders with Belarus. Actually, I am surrounded by enemies from all the sides and all of these nations, they are from the same coalition. Just imagine they attack me at the same time. Yes, I can hold them off because I have my strength point, which is the Air Force and actually now, I have a decent Air Force, level 4 strike fighters and level 3 attack helicopters. They are going to be a good combination here with the National Guards on land. Now I'm going to start spamming the naval patrol aircrafts. Why? Because here France literally gave us the idea to start the Nimrod naval patrol aircrafts because if he's going for the destroyers and the cruisers our NPA they are going to be our lethal weapon against him especially we are in the no navy challenge so we cannot make no naval units I'm going to patrol the French borders here with my attack helicopters keep them between the cities of Frankfurt and Colonia uh, at the same time I'm going to send my air security fighter here to my to the North Sea, north of uh, Germany, to have a look there. Maybe, maybe they are parking some units there. You can see here that all of the United Kingdom is under the rule of France. He is active. The level four army base is ready. The level four naval base also is ready. This is Italy. Look at Italy and his buildings. A lot of level two air bases. A lot of level two army bases and a level two naval base. This is uh, the Scandinavians. I don't know why Norway gave me the right of way, but yeah, that's a good that's a good thing. A good thing. At least we have someone by our side here. I am going to keep looking, and I am going to study the buildings of my enemies. Here looks like uh, Belarus with level two army base without the arms industries. 
he is making a lot of um, mechanized infantry. You can see, whenever you see level 2 army base with level 1 recruiting office, that means mechanized infantry. This is uh, the fifth attack wing of Germany. Our Luftwaffe is getting bigger and bigger day by day. And we are going to create one of the greatest air forces in the history of the game in this episode and in these series. This is our air force now. 18 level 4 strike fighters and uh, 10 level 2 attack helicopters and the level 3 is underway. I am uh, still preparing my, uh, arm, arm, my units on the Romanian borders. Also, I'm going to spare some units on the Belarusian borders as well. Maybe, maybe I might open multiple fronts in this episode. Why? Because um, I actually wait for someone to attack the other side and keep his side with me empty and unprotected. This is the golden chance and the golden uh, opportunity to attack your neighbor. Exactly like I did with Poland. I waited for him to attack Ukraine and later I hit hard on the back. Now Belarus is making uh, a Russian campaign, so 100% he sent his uh, land armies to uh, the Russian lands. Of course, he's, he needs to send all of his armies to Russia because Russia is big and he needs a lot of units to uh, be able to conquer it. So 100% Belarus, he does not have a lot of defenses on his German borders here with us. It looks like a golden chance to start Operation Barbarossa to start the Eastern Front, to start the invasion of Belarus. This is a golden chance, boys. And yes, now I am going to declare the war on Belarus here because this is one of the beautiful chances that we will not have uh, any more later because life is chances. You need to take it, you never lose it. And let's put on Operation Barbarossa Okay, so like usual we are going to start the assault with our strike fighters He does not have mobile sum launchers, so I really do not need to use my attack helicopters on him I'm going to keep my attack helicopters here on the French borders. I uh, prepared an airfield I'm going to uh, relocate my air force there in that airfield. I'm going to keep with them uh, a stack of uh, strike fighters. Maybe he arrives with strike fighters or ASF. At least my strike fighters, they will provide some uh, defense. Let's go for the level four attack helicopter. On the Belarusian uh, invasion, of course, we uh, start with uh, the airstrikes on his land. On, and on all of his uh, homeland cities and later on we enter empty cities with national guards I receive a lot of questions many of us is national guards good why you always play with national guards and not with motorized infantry okay now today in 2022 80% of uh, conflict of nations players they play with motorized infantry and they all of them they max them up like swiftly and very very soon actually when you have max level uh, motorized infantry and your enemy has max level motorized infantry it's not a big deal because both of you is going to attack each other from distance it's not a big difference so why i changed my strategy with national guards because here i'm going to focus on air force and i do not need actually i do not need land uh, units to take down my enemies. The combination of attack helicopters and strike fighters is going to be lethal, at least early game. This is Austria. You can see that also Austria is building the level three um, army bases. It's not going to be a good thing to let him build those army bases level three. I need to destroy him before he does that. This is why I'm going to send a stack of strike fighters to patrol him. I'm 100% sure. In the next days, Europe is going to get chaotic. Europe is going to be destroyed. I'm going to open multiple fronts on everyone and let's see who is going to be the winner. See you guys and bye bye.